One of a teacher's duties to a student, the Buddha said, is to offer protection in all directions. Though in his case, it didn't mean that he was going to go around with a sword and a shield to fight off your enemies. Instead, he was going to give you the knowledge that you could use to depend on yourself. It begins with the knowledge that what you experience right now is not totally coming in from the past. You have choices you can make in the present moment, and those choices will have an impact on the present moment. In fact, the choices you make right now will make the difference between whether you suffer in the present moment or not. So it's a question of learning how to be skillful. And this is what the Buddha taught, the distinction between skillful and unskillful actions. One of his students was accused one time, saying, this teacher of yours is a nihilist, he doesn't teach anything. That was because the Buddha wasn't giving answers to the hot questions of the day, whether the world was eternal or not eternal, finite or infinite, that sort of thing. And the student said, no, the Buddha is not a nihilist. He does teach something important. He teaches the distinction between what's skillful and what's not. So right now, what's skillful? Focusing on your mind, focusing on your breath, trying to get the mind to settle down. Because the mind, when it's settled down, is in a much more secure place. It can watch itself. It can see its actions clearly. Because you don't want to just follow the rules. In other words, when the Buddha says that certain types of actions are unskillful, you do avoid them. And when he says certain actions are skillful, you try to give rise to them. But there are a lot of areas where it's going to be up to your powers of observation to see how to apply those general principles. Then your powers of observation will be a lot clearer if you can get the mind still. This is another way in which we create a refuge for ourselves, provide protection for ourselves. We live in a world where there's a lot of danger. And some of those dangers, in fact, the most important dangers are the ones that come from within. We have a lot of anxiety. When I was on the trip this month, I noticed a lot of the questions had to do with anxiety. Some of it, of course, is a result of all the news that we hear. But there is a basic anxiety that comes from the fact that we have been born, and when you're born you take hold of a body, and that body leaves you exposed to all kinds of dangers. It can get sick. Other people can attack it. So you have to realize that this is not your most important possession. If it were, the Buddha would advise you to do everything you can to defend the body. He's more interested, though, in having you defend your mind. And so he says, you take yourself as a refuge. And you do that, he says, by taking the Dharma as a refuge. And what does it mean to take the Dharma as a refuge? You learn how to establish mindfulness. The Buddha's instructions on establishing mindfulness are to protect us from our thoughts that go out into the world and cause us trouble, and at the same time to give us a good, solid place to stay within the mind itself. So our happiness has a source that comes from within and doesn't depend on things outside. And the word outside here means from the body on out doesn't have to depend on things outside being a certain way, because the ways of the world are many, and a lot of them are beyond our control. When we're born into this world, each of us has karma, and we have no idea what that karma is coming in from the past. But fortunately, the state of our mind right now doesn't have to depend on past karma. The things that are really important in life don't have to depend on past karma. They can depend on your karma right now. So how do you establish mindfulness? You stay focused on the breath. This is an aspect of what the Buddha calls the body in and of itself. 
and at the same time you put aside greed and distress with reference to the world. The world here means sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, ideas, and the senses that allow you to see those things, know those things. And as we chanted just now, those things are on fire. Birth, aging, and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. You know, our problem is we want to find our happiness there in the world. We're looking in the wrong place. So as you're focusing in, learn how to put aside any thoughts you have that may be greedy for certain things in the world to be a certain way, or get distressed by the fact that things in the world are a certain way. You've got this area inside the body as you experience it from within, but more importantly, the mind as you experience it from within. This, the Buddha said, is actually the forerunner of all things you're going to experience. So when you get the source down, then the results that come from the source are going to have to be good. Now to maintain your focus here and to put aside all unskillful thoughts, the Buddha recommends developing three qualities. The first is mindfulness itself, the ability to keep something in mind. Once you've made up your mind you're going to stay with the breath, you remember that. You hold on to that. At the same time, you learn how to remember from your past experience when disturbances come up, when distractions come up, how to recognize them as distractions, and then what to do with them. All too often, the hindrances come up. They're sensual desire, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and anxiety, and doubt. And we tend to side with them. Lust comes and we decide, well, that object really is worthy of lust. We feel ill will for someone and we think that person really does deserve to suffer. We feel sleepy and we tell ourselves, oh, it's a sign, no, I've got to rest now. When you're anxious about things, you have lots of reasons to be anxious, and so on down the line. But mindfulness is what recognizes these things as hindrances. Once you know that it's a hindrance, then you remember what to do with it. How to deal with lust, how to deal with ill will. So when you're anxious about the future, you can ask yourself, well, do I really know what's going to happen in the future? Part of the anxiety, of course, is that you don't know. But you can remind yourself, the Buddha taught certain things that apply to any situation. As he says, you apply appropriate attention to any situation at all. It's not that each present moment is totally brand new, unheard of. It may be a new moment, but it falls under the same patterns that all the other moments of the past have fell on, fallen under. In other words, it's, it's a mixture of your past actions and your present actions. You don't simply accept, well, this is the way things are, and leave it there. Each present moment has some potentials, good potentials, bad potentials. And you want to learn how to activate the good potentials. So you remember that. It's what you do right now, what your mind does right now. That's the most important thing. What's going to happen to the body, what's going to happen to the world outside, that's secondary. And you can train the mind to do th skillful things. So these are all things that you keep in mind. This is the aspect of mindfulness. Then the second quality the Buddha recommends is alertness. You watch what the mind is actually doing. You see the results that you're getting. If you're slipped off the breath, okay, you bring it right back. While you're with the breath, you're trying to be as sensitive as possible to how the breathing feels. So even though you may not be able to create a sense of well-being in every part of the body. Find the areas where you can create a sense of well-being. Focus on those. And then if you find the mind slipping off again, okay, bring it right back again. Then bring it right back again, that's 
basically the, the third quality, which is ardency. You try to really do this well. I don't know how many people I've talked to who say, well, when things in life get bad, you just have to surrender to them and admit them. Well, you admit them, yes, but you admit also that you have some potentials. There are some things you can do. Even as the body ages, even as it grows ill, even as it dies, there are things the mind can do. It has choices, and you want to do them well. So right now, if you slip off from the breath, put the mind in a short leash, bring it right back. And while you're here with the breath, try to be ultra-sensitive to how it feels, how it feels coming in, how it feels going out, where you can make it feel that it's really satisfying. What are the most sensitive parts of the body that respond most quickly? to a comfortable breath or an uncomfortable breath. Focus there and provide them with what feels really good. I know some people who say that this is teaching you to be attached to pleasure. Well, they're, they're skillful pleasure. As the Buddha said, if we don't have this pleasure, the pleasure of concentration, then the only pl way to escape from the pain that, that we can see is going for sensuality, and that's not skillful, because you get involved in sensuality, then of course there's going to be sensual craving, and sensual craving is going to lead you on to, to bad places. So you try to create a sense of well-being right here, through the way the mind focuses on the breath. Think of the breath bathing the body. Sometimes we, when we talk about Watching the breath it relates the, the whole question of meditation too much to your visual field or visual field in your mind. Think of it more as something you're going to feel throughout the body. Feel down the arms, feel down the legs, feel in the torso. Wherever you can create a sense of well-being through that feeling. Okay, allow that to, to develop, to grow, to stay. And it's in this way that you build yourself an island. The Buddha's instructions to his monks shortly before his death was make an island for yourself. Make a refuge for yourself. Make yourself your refuge. Make, your, make the Dhamma your refuge. And you do that by establishing mindfulness in this way. Keeping track of the breath putting aside greed and distress for the, with reference to the world, and doing it by being mindful, alert, and ardent. It's in this way that you provide protection for yourself, because ultimately the real dangers are not so much the dangers outside, the dangers in your own mind. The dangers outside can harm you only up to death, but the dangers in your own mind can harm you beyond that if you're not careful. So focus your attention there. Invest as much as you can into training the mind. This island that you have, you can have wealth on the island through the good qualities of mind that you develop. So invest in that kind of wealth. Invest in your time in developing the mind as much as you can. And that way you find safety, the safety that goes beyond aging, beyond illness, beyond death. It's in this way, by teaching this, that the Buddha provided us with protection. But of course that protection is going to work only if we provide protection for ourselves. And that's something we can do. We have to keep reminding ourselves of that. We are capable of doing this. As long as you have that confidence, you can go far. <laughs>